Okay, so let's sit here and think about what the situation is. I could search forums, kick, scratch, and struggle for hours to figure out how I can get this goddamn thing to work. I could try to do it on my own. I think the situation is somewhat unique. <laughs> now, yeah, now I don't got any screen control at all. <laughs> um, I've, I have a few things that, a few tools to my advantage that aren't apparent on its surface. Uh, one of those things happens to be that there's a desk with an identical set of hardware uh, 10 feet down the hall that somewhere in there there are configuration files that get the result that I that I want and the problem the problem I have right now <coughs> of course is that um, I need to somehow be able to place the the files there in my situation I I, I I got more than one operating system to choose, and those other operating systems are able to mount uh, the uh, the Ubuntu directory from from there. You know, as so long as I'm as I'm root in general, I won't have to mess around with the underlying system all that much to make a change in my Ubuntu system to see you know to get the result that I want. Now, last night I looked up something about I'm really Ideally, right now, you'd want to be able to go into run level 3, or you'd want to log into a, a different terminal. You can see here, uh, when, I, when I was doing FreeBSD, I, if I get stuck, or NetBSD, no, I didn't get that, yeah, NetBSD, maybe. Um, no, I never got a graphical user, I never uh, put on camera when I had a, a very crappy uh, X window. But the way to get out of the situations when you're stuck in general, it's always been this way, is that you just open up another terminal. And what all that means is, is you know, Unix is more than one login screen, so you just go Control-Alt, say F2, and what should happen is it should respond to that, and it should give you the login screen. Control-Alt, F3, like Control-Delete. Well, in this case, Ubuntu isn't doing that. So now I'm really in a tough spot. It's really um, unfortunate the way they have it set up here. And, uh, you know, I'm not used to this kind of problem. <coughs> um, usually, you know, I, I, I do SUSE for a number of years, and that that, that had never changed. Those, those other terminals were available. They were available for a reason. <sighs> anyway, get to the beginning back of the story. So I, I looked, I did a search, you know, Ubuntu, you know, how to log, how to boot up with uh, run level 3, which means non-graphical user interface, and then at that point it may have a chance of configuring X. Right? It's, it's still going to be tough, but um, I might have a chance of doing that. I have a chance of editing the files, the way, you know, with, say, Emacs, you know, not, not non-X Emacs, or even Edit or Nano or, God forbid, VI, but I'll have a shot. Well, I gotta be able to get to. I have to be able to get to the terminal first, and I'm snookered out of that. The only choice I really have right now that that you wouldn't have otherwise, if you don't have multiple partitions, is to boot into another op, uh, another one of the Linux setups that could mount this, <coughs> and then edit and create the changes that I want. That's one thing. The other thing is, is if I knew exactly what files controlled the way this behaved and looked. I could um, simply copy those files from the working computer down the hall and uh, and put them into place from another operating system that I booted into, be it uh, Fedora or, or Mandriva. And then I have another, a third option, which I'm, I'm considering highly because I, I don't know exactly where the config files are. They used to be at user, local, live, lib, X11, uh, X11R6, and then it would be XF86 uh, config. That'd be, a, that, that'd, that'd be the file. You know, in the past, I've, I've, I've had this dual, <coughs> dual boot situation, so I would go in to um, one that had a better looking uh, 
uh, monitor resolution to it. You know, some of them would do a better job at configuring it than others. <coughs> and then I would just take that config file and plop it in, and that would be my solution 90% of the time. Or uh, I'd say 99, if not 100% of the time. Now, uh, maybe about three years ago, they moved that file from user local live x11 to just etc. x11, but it had the same name, x36.conf. And then when xorg took over, it was xorg.conf instead of x36.conf. When I poke around in Ubuntu now and I look at etc. x11, I, I don't see those files. In fact, maybe I should just pull the plug again. The really decent thing about these file systems is they can be pretty resi resilient and they'll be able to handle plug pullings <laughs> galore. And I don't really like this the color of this desk, but <laughs> nonetheless it's mine and I'm not going to complain because the boss likes it. Okay, let's just go into Fedora because I'm was last night I was able to boot into Fedora and I was able to log in to, uh, into GNOME as root. There, there's another barrier, I think, in, in fact, my Mandriva is missing KDE. For Christ's sake. It's missing KDE. It said, important updates are available. So I clicked, go ahead and update. And then what happened was, is that uh, some of the installs worked. Some of the installs failed, saying that it couldn't install, and it showed the exact same version as the one that I had. And then when I rebooted, my KDE was gone. And that was probably the only good thing about the Mandriva setup I had, is that it looked good. But you, Obviously, it isn't very functional, so who cares if it looks good? you got to get the functionality down first. That's where Slackware gets it right. I'm really starting to favor Slackware as a model on the desktop because I really don't think they change much. You don't see an awful lot of Slackware questions out there. You know, you really don't. And if you do, there's always some guy that'll come along eventually. The one or two guys that are using it. Um, uh, but the, the solution will always be elegant and simple. That's what I like about Slackware. And I think it's consistent. And if it's not consistent, it's easy enough to do. When I first booted in here, it gave me some kind of... Um, yeah, okay, here, this I, this is so stupidly annoying. There's the little, I clicked on the little Sheriff star there. And Sheriff SE Linux is going to tell me that suspicious behavior. And that suspicious behavior is me logging in as root. Well, I, it's not suspicious to me, because I'm doing it. <laughs> Another thing is that little star would probably wouldn't show up if I was logging in as the regular user. And someone else logging in as a root from the terminal. I, I don't think. Okay, so, where am I? Uh, the, this 28 gigabyte file system happens, happens to be my Ubuntu. And uh, let's go to etc. See, this doesn't jiggle either. I don't have proprietary drivers in here. And let's go down here to X11, where they've the last place that I've known it to have a. Uh, okay, so here's the xorg.conf. Now the problem I got here is I've got this point one fail safe, and I wonder. No, that is Ubuntu's. Now I've got to work in X over here on my own computer. This is misleading down here. It says system. Those are disk labels, and I think this is for the uh, Windows uh, uh, recovery. And this is the actually my Windows 7. Okay, where am? Let's see if I can go to places, home folder. If I can go up, see there's no up arrow. So I just oh there. It's just you know, who would ever know? Let's try etc. 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 Let's try x11. And now I look in here and I go, what the fuck? I don't have a um, xorg.com. Now I can try to poke around in. Um, let's see, was it U 
Who's your local? There's differences between these things, even though they look. User, etc. No. Uh, this, you know, this kind of inconsistency, whatever it is, is something that um, I think the Linux standard base was trying to address to get everybody to okay, user local lib, and there's nothing in there. <laughs> user local, etc. This is crazy. See, the problem is, I don't know, I wonder, no, see, I'm missing here in etc. You know, so I, I can sit here, I could monkey around all fucking afternoon, or I could just do another Ubuntu install, because I happen to have two empty partitions. You do the Ubuntu install and activate the drivers. The problem is I want to use this 28 gigabyte partition for Ubuntu, not a 10 gigabyte. But turns out it's end up that I'm going to end up doing just that. <coughs> but then still, why do that? Because I got the other one down the hall, and I still don't know where X11 is stored in uh, Ubuntu, or do I? Now, I need to get a... Okay, let me try man Derivas, because I think I have... If I change that xorb.conf, it's got a backup. The backup... Uh, I looked at the date stamp for the backup. Um, let's see if I can... I don't even know how to change the view on this here. <sighs> Fuck, man. Modification day. Well, it doesn't tell you. Yeah, I want to be able to see view... Items. You know, can I just see the fucking date here? You know, I hate GNOME, I really do. <sighs> this is mounted under media. This is the some kind of UUID label of my Ubuntu partition. I'm guessing I'm going to want to do something about this xorg.com. I don't know if I just delete these. Maybe I see, I don't know what the failsafe is. I don't know enough about what this needs how this needs to read. It's got the VESA driver. And it may not be that. It may be something to do with KDE. You see, that's the problem I got here. And KDE is stored under something like opt. KDE 3. Well, it's probably isolated to this area. Okay, let me stop for the second part of this.